Hey everybody, Mark B. Dub with Gardening Gone Wild. Welcome back to the greenhouse. Well, as you can see, we're not in the greenhouse today, but I've got a video that's going to get you excited about building your greenhouse. So I decided I would take the time to do it inside. Unfortunately, when I built my greenhouse, I didn't film it, but I took a lot of pictures. So what I want to do today is I want to create a, a slideshow for you to be able to see step by step the production greenhouse uh, construction and uh, what it looks like. So with this first slide you can see that I've got everything all staked out on the ground ready to print where I want to build my greenhouse. I've got stakes, I've got twine or string to stretch around those stakes. And so what it does is it helps me to know right exactly where I want to build it. Now you'll notice that my stake on the right bottom corner is a little ways away from the fence. And that's something you want to consider when building a greenhouse. If you're going to build it next to a fence or a property line, you want to make sure you give it at least three to six feet for your easement rights. Now make sure you talk with your neighbor. Hey, and let them know what you're doing because after all, good neighborly relations is probably the only way to live in a neighborhood, to have good, good friends. Okay? Now, we're going to go from this flat of ground to this, the greenhouse. Doesn't that just make you exciting? Stick around, watch the, watch the video, and I'll show you some awesome slides of my greenhouse construction. If you like what you see, make sure you subscribe, hit the, hit the like button, and share. You bet you got to share it. And then of course, if you have any comments or questions, make those below and I'll make sure that I answer them as soon as I can. Now, let's carry on. So when you map out your little area where you're going to build your greenhouse, whether you're going to dig a footing, pour cement for your walls to mount your greenhouse to, or if you're just going to uh, pour a pad of cement, or just some footings around the size of your greenhouse to hold that greenhouse down to the ground because after all that's an important thing to do is to keep that thing anchored down to the ground because a strong wind comes through a microburst or any kind of wind at all and you don't have that thing battened down to the ground it could end up in the other neighbor's yard just like your trampoline did the last time you had a big windstorm so think about that okay but when you're building your greenhouse, you want to uh, dig in the foundation. You want to make sure that you dig that footing about two to three feet wide. Give you about 10 to 12 inches on each side of your footing or what you're doing so that it allows you some space to work because you're going to need to get in there with your drills to drill wood together. You're going to need to get in there with some nails and different things like that. I recommend using a plate compactor, which is that machine that you see down there in the bottom of your slide right now. Now the plate compactor allows you to be able to go around the whole footing trench so that you can compact it down. You have a nice solid foundation, okay? After I get my soil all compacted, I like to dump some what's called road base material. Now road base material is a conglomerate of uh, little gravel, little sand, little dirt, and a couple other components. And what it does is it provides a nice compaction when you take that plate compactor and go around and compact it down. I recommend you make about three or four passes with that plate compactor to give yourself a good solid foundation. Now if you can't afford the, uh, the road base, there's another material called crusher fines that you could use. Uh, just check with your local aggregate company. Those crusher fines are actually pieces of rock that are chipped off of bigger rock when they can make it down to a smaller and sell it that way for somebody that needs it. And then those chipper fines, uh, crusher fines, are there for you to be able to use. And if you put down two or three inches of that, that's 
comparable to about four or five inches of the road base. Wet it down, compact it. It's almost like cement because it comes together so well. Okay. As you're digging your trench, you want, definitely want to make sure you have a place to put your soil. Now, I dug my trench with a little mini X or a mini excavator, they call it, a mini X. And it's got the little scoop on the front that you just scoop the, the soil out and you dig your trench all the way around your stakes and your, and your lines, okay? Find a place to put that dirt because you're going to have a lot of dirt digging that out, okay? Now, because I didn't have enough money or I didn't have enough time or know how to build forms and lay cement, I used cinder block. Now, cinder block is a good alternative to cement for a foundation or footing for a greenhouse. I don't know that I'd do this for a house, uh, but I would for a greenhouse. And so what I did is I used a 10 by 12 by 16 cinder block that I got for free. That's right. You're going to hear that a lot in this in this video with my construction slides. Because there are most of all the components that I use on my greenhouse, I did get for free. Again, it's just going out, driving to work, driving to church, driving to school, taking your kids, whatever, going to the grocery store, and you see things that are sitting around, they've been there for a while. You wonder if the people that have it are really going to use it. You drive by a a uh, masonry yard that's got a lot of block that's just been sitting there for a year or two or three or more. And you just simply get up the gumption <laughs> and you go in and you say, hey, I noticed you have a bunch of blocks out there that have been there for quite a long time. What are you going to do with them? And then go from there, okay? Uh, excellent, though. You'll notice I've got my first score of block, which is the first level of block there. And then as I continue to work on that, I do end up with my second score of block, my second level, and that's as high as I'm going to go with my footings with those cinder block. Notice I've got a little hole down there in the bottom right hand corner just below the second score block. I've got my gray pipe with my uh, electrical that I'm going to be putting in. That's where I'm going to have my water come in as well. And uh, because I'm using an electric heater, I'm not doing any gas into my greenhouse. Okay, Here I am sizing up the block. I've got gray split face cinder block. Now this cinder block is a 12 by 12 by 16, a little bit wider than the 10 by 12 by 16, but the thing is is that it sits on the footing cinder blocks just right. I kind of split the difference of that extra couple inches so that when I pour my cement down into the block holes to help solid solidify everything and make it more firm and give me some more insulation in my wall then um, I've got it set up so it's not going to leak out the bottom of those block. Okay, Split face center block is just like you see it. You've got a rough face on one side and then the other sides are smooth so that they all come together really nicely. So here we go. We're starting to lay the center block. One block at a time. And something that I used to put my blocks together is construction adhesive. Better than or stronger than nails caulking. I use the larger tubes with a larger caulk gun. That helps me to glue those all together. Instead of using the mortar mix that normally you would use in a masonry build like this, I didn't know much about that. I didn't want to spend the money on the mortar. Uh, it was going to take about 20 bags of mortar for this. So I bought about uh, 12 big tubes of uh, caulking to help glue my cinder block together. Okay. And here is actually a picture of the pallets of cinder block that I did. I found for free. I saw on a classified ad we have here in Utah called KSL Classifieds. In the free section, a guy was just cleaning out his yard and had a bunch of these cinder blocks. Now, not his home yard, but his business yard where he was a mason. And he had all these blocks left over. So I was able to score them. And I scored seven and a half pallets worth, just enough to help me build the full wall on my little greenhouse. Okay, We add a second score, go up to the third score, and on and on. You can see there's a little the tube of caulking right there uh, in the blue caulk gun. And then, of course, you need to have a masonry saw 
or a cement saw so that you can cut those block in case one might be a little longer than the other one. You need to fit it in to a tight space, okay? And there you go. There's the four scores or four levels of cinder block for my little greenhouse. Notice on the far end in the picture that you see an uh, opening that's for my door. Yes, you need to make sure you take that into consideration when you're laying block like this that you leave an opening for your door. Okay. Another important issue or thing to remember is to make sure that after you get this all built like this, if you're, if you're doing it this way, is to fill in all of the backfill against the block inside and outside of your structure so that you have a level working plane to work on, okay? Because if you don't, you're going to be tripping and stumbling and, and twisting a knee or an ankle or something or a back, and then, uh, yeah, things aren't fun from there. So uh, You can notice where my gray blocks, the four levels come down to my footings, the tan blocks. I'll eventually fill that with a little soil around the edges to fill that in and then I'll put my gravel on top of that. Another nice shot of the level ground around everything and there's the inside of the greenhouse looking into the door opening that I had built so that I can make sure that I could fit my door in there. Now we're getting really close to the most exciting part of all this and that's actually starting to build the greenhouse. Just some extra pictures in there for you. Now, unfortunately, I had some cement jobs there at the house in my different place in my yard that I had some extra cement left over that I had to end up just dumping on the ground. And that big pile of stuff right there is the result of that. So, But make sure you keep your area around your, your construction site nice and clean so that nobody's tripping, okay? Now... I talked a little bit about the cement, okay? Filling up the blocks with cement, and there we are right there. We started filling them up one five-gallon bucket at a time. Now, I was able to get cement from a friend who was a pump truck operator for a company when they build houses and buildings and such that they pump that from the truck over to the actual footings uh, or forms that they're building a house or building with. And occasionally they have some leftover. And so what I did is I said, hey, I need some cement. And of course, he's got a little one yard cement trailer. And so I borrowed that and I'd go from different job to different job to get the different leftover cement that they'd have off of those jobs. Because most cement truck companies are going to take it back to their yard and they've got kind of a slurry area where they'll clean out their trucks and they'll just unload all of that extra cement that they've got on there. And the pump, pump truck driver unloads it back onto the cement truck so he can clean out his uh, equipment so he doesn't have any left in there. So, so as we filled up the, each block at the top of the wall with cement, we made sure that it percolated all the way down to the ground into the two levels of the tan footing block so that we could have a solid wall all the way around. Now, because the little dump trailer that my friend borrowed me to haul that yard of cement each time we got a yard, we had to dip a bucket in there and scoop it up and then pour that into the wall. Now, four yards of cement, one half of a bucket, we could not fill that five gallon bucket to the top because it was almost impossible to maneuver and to carry. And so we would just fill it up halfway. So. I didn't count how many buckets it took, but I'm thinking it was in the hundreds. Four yards of cement. Thank goodness I had some great help in my brother and his son to help me out with this. But we filled every hole in every block right up to the top so that we could mount the wood part of the structure onto it with some anchor bolts. And we'll show you those here in just a second. Now, towards the end of the pour, my brother's like, Mark, We've got extra cement. What are we going to do with it? And I sure didn't want to have another blob of cement setting off on the side of the structure there like those others I showed you, just drying out and then having to figure out how to get rid of it. So I decided to get some cinder block I had sitting off to the side, made some forms. Yep, that's right. I used cinder block to make my forms because, hey, 
I didn't have time to run and grab wood and come back and form it up because the concrete was setting up in the trailer as it was. So I took these cinder blocks you see off to the side of that little pad and I put them all together and tightened them up just because they were so heavy they were tight and we poured the cement in there and voila have my little uh, porch actually to walk into my greenhouse so that was pretty cool. There's our finished product. Now it's time to start building. Yep, there's another shot of the great wall of my greenhouse filled with cement, ready to go. And now, guess what? The exciting part of actually putting the wood on top and building the part, top structure part of the greenhouse. Exciting. You can see I've got my door framed in. It's nice. I've got my three to four or five feet away from the fence to keep my neighbor happy and also allow me some entrance in there, some access in case I need to get along the side and and when I have to reapply the polyethylene on there, the soft poly, in about five or six years, I have that nice little walkway down between my fence and my greenhouse. And there I've got my cooling pad cell opening framed in. There's my anchor bolts that help to anchor the treated lumber that we use for the bottom plate of the walls onto the block into the cement. Now typically you want to allow about uh, a week to 10 days for that cement to, to really harden and set up so that your, your anchor bolts, when you put them in there, they, they don't come out. Uh, they're very solid and, and very uh, sturdy in there for you, okay? Then you can see that I've finished pouring in all the rock, the gravel into my greenhouse for my drainage. Remember, I'd like to have about 10 to 12 inches of gravel for drainage. Um, trenching. We talked about trenching in one of the three-part videos about so you think you want to build a greenhouse. And that's what I had to do is I had to trench over to my house to get my power. I had to trench over to the water line to get my water. And so that's what you see right there, the white pipe or my water. And uh, then I had dug the trench all the way over to my house to be able to get my power to come down through that silver conduit that's right there coming down. Then my trench to my greenhouse. I had to dig that about two and a half feet deep. I put my electrical in the bottom of the trench, filled it six inches with sand so that you know that you've got, you're getting close to, to electrical or something that's uh, dangerous if you're digging in your ground any further or people down the road that uh, come along to buy the house from you if you decide you want to sell it. Here's my greenhouse. Here's inside. Okay. Unfortunately, I didn't have power in there yet, so I had to run a, a nice heavy-duty extension cord. As you can see on both sides of the floor in the greenhouse, I've got two sets of trusses. We put those together and that helps to start building the roof part of the greenhouse. Looking pretty cool, isn't it? My brother, my best friend, he helped me build my greenhouse. Remember we talked about trading flowers and planters and things for people that help you along the way. Uh, my good friend helped me do this and so I, I, uh, I trade flowers for him. He's a contractor. He builds houses. He remodels them here in Utah and does a fabulous job. And there we go. There's our roof all put together in the sunset, looking pretty spiffy. Another angle from the west, looking east. See our beautiful mountains there in the top right-hand corner. We continue to add to the structure to make sure that we have a good, solid building so when we go to wrap our polyethylene on it that uh, it's strong and sturdy. One of the other awesome events was when we realized that we had our water hooked up, turned on the phosphory hydrant, and there we go. We got water. Now you definitely want to have, if you plan on doing things in this winter in your greenhouse, you want to make sure that you have a phosphory hydrant if you're in a cold climate like we are here in Utah. Because if you don't, your pipes are going to freeze, they're going to crack, and you're going to have to do it all over. And these farm hydrants, as I call it, aren't that cheap. That was about 150 bucks for that one at my local sprinkler supply company. And you don't want to let the water freeze in that pipe and then crack it because you have to replace the whole thing. But my pipe goes down about three feet into the ground so that when I shut that off, all the water drains down the pipe out into a little rock uh, area that I have at the bottom. And then when I turn it on, it actually activates the, the lever to open it up and then bring the water back through. So, looking good, isn't it? 
getting you excited to get out there and build one? You betcha. Make sure you use a nice, good, sturdy ladder, uh, especially in your gravel that's got bigger feet. Uh, I like the little giant ladder system something that I used to sell forever and a day back in the good old days and I've got a couple of them and that's what I use to help build my greenhouse. Now remember we talked about painting your wood, making sure that that wood is painted. You want to do that so that it helps to seal it so that it doesn't get affected by the humidity, the dryness, the humidity, the dryness, the heat, the cold, on and on so that it allows you to protect it so that your structure stays solid and firm. Almost looks like metal, doesn't it? In fact, a lot of people that have come by said, whoa, you built that out of metal? No, I just painted it gray so that it looks like metal. Awesome, awesome little greenhouse. I'm looking down the north side of the greenhouse where the roof meets the wall and then down the south side of the greenhouse where the roof meets the wall to make sure that we're all true and ready to continue. Now, Free 99. That's my new name, nickname, Free99, because I find so much free stuff on KSL Classifieds that I'm going and picking it up, I'm bringing it back to the house, I'm using it on the greenhouse, and this door is a Free99 product. It's off of my good friend's son's front door when he replaced it to get a different one, and it fits perfect in where I framed out the block and also the wood. Okay, And there you go. The door frame without the door on the bottom right, and the door frame with the door on the top left. And there it is. So on my end walls, I decided I wanted to make it a little bit more sturdy or a little bit more um, functional. And so I got what's called polycarbonate sheeting. That's the twin wall, quarter to eighth inch twin wall polycarbonate sheeting that they put on a greenhouse. And yes, I got that for free as well. Sorry, I might be making some of you nauseous <laughs> from all this free stuff, but hey, it's important, it works, and it's nice. I have a good friend that builds a lot of greenhouses for Lowe's and Home Depot and different grocery stores uh, for a company out of Colorado, uh, Nexus Greenhouses, and uh, he has some of this left over in his storage shed where he keeps all of his supplies, and I was talking to him one day and asked him about it, and he said, hey, come and take what you want. Or what you need. So I took what I wanted, not what I needed, because I knew I'd have other projects down the road. So I put that on both my west, my east wall, which is this wall here where my door is, and then my west wall right here where my cooling pad is. And it looks pretty nice. I used some poly, soft poly patch to cover the seams where the polycarbonate came together because I didn't have full sheets to use, and so I had to make do. Here, that silver shiny uh, channel that you see there is the poly lock. That helps to hold the polyethylene, the two soft layers of uh, plastic on my greenhouse. It's called channel lock. And as you put the plastic on there, you've got a little wire called a wiggle wire. And so the wiggle wire actually helps to hold your soft poly onto your greenhouse structure. And then also if you ever have a need for a shade cloth and you want to put a shade cloth on there, you can also use some extra wiggle wires, that wire in there uh, side that channel lock is called. You can attach your um, shade cloth onto your greenhouse. Okay, So here we are, we've wrapped both layers of the soft poly on there. You can see it up the side there, coming up around the, the wall up to the roof, and then all the way down along the bottom of the wall there we've got the poly. Uh, the channel lock with the wiggle wire in there. Man, once you start uh, getting that all sealed off and, and you get everything finished up with your, poly with your polyethylene and your end walls, the heat starts to build up in there. Be prepared because you'll want to go in there and hunker down and just kind of hibernate because it feels so good. Uh, I've got my, my little giant ladder there. We're going to trim all the the different uh, pieces off that were too much. We don't want to leave that on for it to get flapped around in the wind and then also cause some grief around the channel lock and the wiggle wire. Now when you have your two layers of poly, you want to install in there a inflation fan. And that's what that little apparatus is there, that black apparatus that's hooked to one of the trusses of the greenhouse and then goes right between the two layers of the, the poly. And 
when you order that and it comes, it will show you and explain to you exactly what to do and how to do it, okay? Then you need an exhaust fan on one end of the, of the greenhouse wall because the other end you've got your cooling pad. And with that cooling pad, it's nice because water trickles down through it as you pump it up into it. And then when the exhaust fan kicks on, it sucks out the old stagnant air out of the greenhouse and brings fresh air from outside. And when it does that, it makes it cool. Those of you that know what a swamp cooler is, that cooling pad is very much like a swamp cooler. You have water in a pad like that, have air pulled through it, and it makes it cool. Very nice. Now, obviously, I've got one more section I've got to put in there, but I just had to make a few adjustments, and there you go. My sump is a 55-gallon drum. I just cut the top off. I put a pump down in there, and I run my pipe, as you can see it, the white pipe. Goes to the right with the blue handle, keeps the flow down to where I need it. And then I have an outlet that lets the water back down into the, the sump, the 55-gallon drum. Good looking water, isn't it? That's what we have here in Utah from all the greatest snow on earth, right? Now notice I've got a couple of little leaks here and there on the bottom of my cooling pad. Um, I feel like I need to eventually redo that bottom trough, make it a little taller. Right now it's four inches, and I'd like to get it about six inches to help contain all that water so it's not always bleeding onto my block. There it is. You can kind of see how as the inflation fan has pumped air in between the two layers, it's kind of made it round. I like to call it the pillow effect. You can see it in those pictures just the same. It's so awesome. I can't hardly wait for everyone to send me pictures of your greenhouse project from start to finish. Share them with me down there below and uh, let's enjoy working together and building together, okay? So there we are, bottom right hand corner from building to the top left hand corner to almost finished. There's a sweet shot at night. I just couldn't resist to throw that one in there because it's actually really dark at night. It's probably about 9, 30, 10 o'clock at night in the summer. Um, I shot, took this shot of the greenhouse with all the lights in it. Of course, I couldn't wait to get my benches in there to start growing. I had lots of people to grow things for, and so I had to get started. Now I've got my benches in there, got my seedlings going. You can see up in the top right-hand corner of my HAF fan, that's the horizontal airflow fan that's going to keep the air circulating in there to keep diseases and such moisture off of the plants. And then in the left-hand corner, I've got my little 10,000 watt heater that uh, sometimes I have to turn on. You need a nice comfortable place to work. Find some heavy duty industrial uh, pads, floor pads, walking on. Uh, I saw this on KSL. A gal was selling a bunch of stuff and I decided, hey, I want to see if she'll actually make me a deal because there was something else that she had that she wanted to sell. And I didn't want to take advantage of the situation. And so I says, hey, how about if I buy this uh, little tool over here and maybe you throw in some of those uh, floor mats for me? She says, I can do that. So I got six floor mats that are normally about $49 at any of your box stores or industrial uh, supply companies. Uh, they're 40, 50 bucks or more. I got them for free. Again, you can find those things. You just got to keep your eye open and watch for them and even get your network of friends helping you out as well. Okay. All right. There you go. The louvers on the end, those are on the west end covering my cooling pad. I like to keep those open during the day to help the air flow through there when the exhaust fan kicks on. Notice I've got a couple of little blocks in there. Hey, it's all manual right now, but eventually it'll become automatic. They'll open and close with a thermostat. And so will my fans. They'll kick on, they'll kick off. And then I try to keep them closed at night, okay? A little extra work manually isn't going to hurt you, but make sure that at night you keep them closed so that it helps to maintain some of the heat that's in there during, during the pickup during the day from the sun. So there we go. We go from construction picture to construction picture, from just having the walls up to having half of the roof up to having the whole roof up. We've got the water in there. We've got the door on. We've got the polycarbonate on the end walls, and we've got the electrical coming.
thank goodness for people you know. Actually, I know this guy pretty good. It's my son-in-law, and uh, he's a journeyman electrician, and uh, he knows his stuff. And fortunately, I was able to have him come in and help me hook all, up all my, uh, run all my electrical through conduit and uh, get it from the house out to the greenhouse and then uh, help me hook everything up. The lights, he had some left over from a job, different wire, different outlets and things like that. And make sure you put in a nice outlet or two. You definitely want to plug in a radio while you're out there working or if you need to recharge your battery on your video camera, it's out there. You don't have to run in and out of the house, okay? So there we go. Lights on. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. We like it. It's looking really nice. Now, I don't use the lights to grow with. I only use them for convenience when I'm out there at night and I get a little bored in the house, which sometimes I do, and I want something to do or I want to go out and check on everything. I can go out and I can actually turn the lights on and I can see. A little darker at night, as you can see by the roof or the ceiling of the greenhouse. It's a little darker outside, so the lights are definitely shining down on everything. Awesome little greenhouse, isn't it? I love it. I've, I've really been blessed to get all the materials. Um, so if you look at the greenhouse right here, the things I, I paid money for were the, the fan and the cooling pad, the heater, and the HAF fan. Didn't pay anything for the lights or the electrical or the installation of all the electrical. I did pay for some of the wood that's on the structure, the framing of the roof and the walls. And of course I had to pay for the the polyethylene, that's the soft poly on top of the greenhouse, but the end walls with the polycarbonate again was free. Here's the Parks Whoppers. They're about 10 to 12 inches tall, just waiting to be put in the ground on Memorial Day when my brother transplants everything because Hey, in Utah, we have late frosts, and sometimes Mother's Day is the time to plant. That's kind of the norm for everybody, but occasionally we can get a late frost or two, and so there's a lot of people I know that don't even plant until Mother's Day, or uh, Memorial Day, rather. Isn't that such a cool shot? I had to throw that in there just to give you another oof, warm and fuzzy that this is going to be cool when I get my greenhouse built, and I've got a few lights out there. It's all good stuff. Now, we're getting close to the end of the video, end of the slideshow. Remember, subscribe to my channel. Make some comments. That gives me some confidence. Helps me to want to provide more information and more teaching for you. Um, make sure you hit the like button. And please share. Please share. And make comments below again, like I said. Because after all, uh, that helps me. It allows me to answer your questions, to re respond to your comments and things like that. I know you always have critics, right? People are always going to be out there criticizing what you're doing, why you did it this way, and what are you doing it that way for. Hey, it works. It's functional, and it works. I hope you enjoyed the video. Until next time, I'm Mark V. Dub with Gardening Gone Wild. Our next video, we're going to talk about trays and containers and inserts, and all your growing supplies. Have a great day.